Well, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining today, wherever you're joining from. I uh, certainly appreciate your, your time and attention uh, for the next hour and, and few minutes. Uh, my name is Jeff Cornelius, and I'm the EVP of Cyberphysical Security here at Darktrace, and uh, we've partnered with ATARC to bring you kind of a perspective on zero trust that, that we embrace and uh, certainly support a zero trust model across the entire federal and fed civ environment. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, a few slides today. And then at the end of the, or closer to the end of this uh, diatribe, I'll walk you through uh, a, a demonstration of Darktrace. Uh, so please just bear with me. If you have any questions, if you drop them in the chat stream, um, Mr. Kuykendall is, is monitoring that for us. He'll call me out on the chat stream every, every three or four questions that come up. So we'll get to those as well. Also throughout the presentation, you'll see uh, my name, email, and my phone number. Uh, you're more than welcome to take screenshots of those. And uh, if you have any questions that you wanna follow up with later, please don't hesitate reaching out uh, to either my email or my mobile and uh, text or phone in either way. And I'll get to those as well. So. Who is Darktrace and why are we presenting to you today? Well, <clears throat> Darktrace was founded in 2013 um, with a simple premise in mind. And that simple premise was pretty straightforward. We recognized that cybersecurity was a growing challenge and that the threat actors were becoming more and more sophisticated every day. So after some really interesting work with uh, the intelligence community in the UK and uh, mathematicians at Cambridge University, we came up with the models that we currently work with today, uh, which have resulted in about 115 patents uh, of our machine learning and AI modeled concepts. And we've grown to a very large organization. We're public on the London Stock Exchange, uh, just over 7,400, 7,500 customers or so, uh, and over 2,000 employees in 30 offices. So a, a large cyber enterprise is what we are. And uh, we've recently in March uh, announced the launch of Darktrace Federal, completely standalone independent entity uh, based in Western Virginia. And uh, our CEO, Marcus Fowler, and VP of Business Development, Ms. Sally Grant, uh, lead us out of, uh, out of the Reston office. So completely standalone, uh, providing uh, services and mission critical support for the federal uh, agencies, DOD, and FedCiv as well. Uh, we're well deployed across the US federal government space, as well as uh, the civilian space uh, and lots of commercial, obviously. But today we're here to talk about zero trust. And the although this will seemingly ramble a bit, I think we all come to a, a funnel uh, near the end that I think is, is meaningful for, for the discussion. As we all know, there are many different uh, many different solutions in, in zero trust. Uh, one of those is, I think I'm still on camera, right? Yeah. Um, many different solutions in zero trust. Um, it's not a specific technology, nor is there a fixed definition. Um, there are many frameworks or paradigms and numerous executive orders and memos have outlined requirements for moving to a more zero trust position. Our favorite here at Darktrace is a representation by the NSA. And that representation by the NSA is uh, part, of, part of the frameworks uh, come from many different uh, locations, but our, as I mentioned, our favorite is the NSA. And very simply put, the zero trust security model assumes that breach is inevitable or is likely already occurred. What's interesting about that perspective is the assumption of breach, but the solution uh, that the NSA articulates is constantly monitoring for anomalous or malicious activity. And this tees us up well for kind of the positioning of dark trace as we move forward. So really, what is zero trust? Well, zero trust is not a specific technology, tool, or set of techniques. The question can get quite contentious actually, but we believe that the answer is summed up quite simply in never trust and always verify. We didn't coin it, it's been used around a bunch, but the idea is very, very important. If we're always verifying, if we're always understanding what normal looks like, that's the constant verification of this is supposed to happen or this is not supposed to happen. 
So why do we need a zero trust framework? Well, here are a whole bunch of reasons that we need a zero trust framework. The ones on the right, I think are most telling. The software supply chain attacks tripled in 2021. Malicious insider behavior increased fivefold in 21 and 22, between 21 and 22. And what's interesting about that is that's the tender underbelly of every network, isn't it? Supply chain and insider behavior. Whether that insider behavior is malicious or naive, it doesn't really matter. Then layer on top of that, the novel attacks that have occurred. No signature or no rule is capable of identifying novel attacks like this. For example, log for shell before it was log for shell. Solar winds before it was solar winds. Wanna cry even before it was wanna cry or any other piece of malware that has made its way to the top of the stack uh, in, in recognition and signature rule. Well, we believe that building a higher wall, a deeper or wider moat, will not meet the need of zero trust. These outdated stack solutions only enhance the degradation of performance and efficiency to the overall mission of cybersecurity and protecting an environment. The paradox of the push towards zero trust is perfectly articulated in the following quote from Neil McDonald from Gartner. And I'll, you can obviously read it, but it's an interesting perspective because the paradox of zero trust is to never trust and always verify, but that you need to extend trust for the digital workplace to be efficient. So at some point, trust must, must be extended. Well, we believe that overcoming that paradox presents a number of different opportunities. And those opportunities are highlighted by the challenges that we see with zero trust. The tooling around zero trust, whether that's the paradigm itself, the application of tool sets to the model, to the paradigm of zero trust, it's just simply not dynamic enough to understand the nuance, the subtlety of every environment in the world. It's just simply not. The, it requires a huge amount of human effort to tag, to configure tool sets, to put in rules, put in definitions. These are all heavy human endeavors. And the challenge with that is that oftentimes humans just simply don't get the job done. We cut corners or we may write a rule that's not comprehensive as an example. It's current further, zero trust solutions um, offer static capabilities that depend on these human defined boundaries I mentioned. That's, that's a significant challenge for us as well. The integration of capabilities is oftentimes lost because corners are cut and the challenges associated with getting comprehensive that comprehensive moat or that comprehensive higher wall is oftentimes a, a limiting factor. Further, the lack of dynamic or, or tailored understanding of each environment, we apply typically in the past, we've applied a generic blanket to every organization. And that generic blanket unfortunately doesn't understand the dynamism of each individual entity, of each individual department or each individual organization. Further, within that organization, it does, that blanket, that generic blanket, whether that's uh, an Okta or a Zscaler or a Palo Alto, it doesn't understand the unique behaviors of devices, users, and network segments within those environments. It doesn't understand the SaaS application interactivity with that organization. It doesn't understand the cloud architecture that that, organiza that specific organization has. And this all gets to the point that, the last one there, that risk is a dynamic process. Understanding what risk is for one organization may be a completely different discussion and topic for another organization. And thus the tooling and capabilities associated with mitigating and understanding the risk tolerance within an organization are different. And this is these outline some of the major challenges that are associated with the way that 
CIOs and CISOs approach risk within their organization from a zero trust architecture perspective? How do I understand and mitigate risk within my organization while, mid, while leveraging a zero trust architecture with the tool set I currently have or the tool set I, that I can potentially partner with? Well, we believe that overcoming that paradox entails leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning. There are a whole bunch of benefits to these. Um, and further, we don't expect security, security leaders to blindly hand over security responsibilities to fully autonomous deliverables. That's just unreasonable. Rather, develop confidence in artificial intelligence and machine learning over time. Take a very passive approach to understanding the environment, model the environment mathematically so that we can understand exactly how devices, users, and network segments behave, and then apply AI and machine learning sets to that content such that we can facilitate the mitigation of risk. The highest risk uh, perspectives can be autonomously mitigated with very surgical precision in the world we live in today that nothing has to be brute force. We don't literally take a sledgehammer to a device to, to fix it. No, instead, very surgical uh, port by port actions can be taken with machine learning and, and artificial intelligence in the, in the world we live in today. Artificial intelligence and machine learning give us a number of benefits. The benefits include real time, 100% monitoring of all communications. Now, there's, I'm going to talk a little bit about how Darktrace approaches uh, monitoring in real time in just a few moments. But think about the value that monitoring every device, every user, and every network segment within an organization brings to the table from a risk mitigation perspective. If I know the subtle behavior of every device, user, and network segment, I can now tell you when every device, user, and network segment behaves differently than it ever has in the past. Now, there's a whole bunch of subtlety there that's very, very important, specifically unsupervised machine learning, specifically Bayesian recursive estimation, allows us to understand at a very, very granular level what normal, quote unquote, normal is, what normal looks like for a device. Now, I'm not talking about baselining. That's a very, that's a completely different topic because baselining entails forming a gold standard or blueprint of the network and then comparing against that blueprint. Well, the fallacy of baselining is that you build in bad. You build in anything that currently exists there in the form of bad. So if you're already compromised or if you've already got a malicious insider or if you've got supply chain that's already compromised your environment in some way, shape or form, baselining that known process results in baselining in bad. You'll never see that bad when it wakes up or does something in the future, lateral motion or reconnaissance. Darktrace, on the other hand, understands dynamically the nature of every device user and network segment. And this allows us to go beyond this default deny posture that is zero trust to a deny and defeat the threat posture. Now that's an important component here because the default deny means Jeff Cornelius can't access A, B or C uh, piece of content. Rather, understanding that Jeff Cornelius should have access to that content, needs to access that content, and is also not the threat because the antecedents associated with his or her behavior over time indicate that this is not the threat. That's an important component. And artificial intelligence and machine learning allow us for phenomenal dynamism in understanding what that environment does on a normal basis, how that user behaves, how that network segment behaves, how that device behaves over time. This allows us phenomenal specificity in the second step, which is not only detecting the anomaly, but the second step, which is responding to an anomaly. Now, the approach that we take is very synonymous with the human immune system. So, just like the human body, you have protective skin. And that I liken to a traditional zero trust model. Um, you can also use uh, the old idea of a castle and, and, and moat uh, example, right? So the castle has certain walls that are a certain height 
and it has a moat and it has a drawbridge as, as examples to keep the bad out. Well, that's all val really well and good until someone comes with a taller ladder or a means to get across the moat without the drawbridge down, or you, you get the idea, right? That's exactly the, the idea of protective skin. There, there are barriers that are put in place and most organization of, organizations have just chosen to stack those barriers to make it seemingly make it more difficult for threat actors to engage. Well, as you'll see from a couple examples that I have a little bit later on, stacking them up just presents a, a new challenge to the threat actor. It doesn't necessarily stop the threat actor. Further, um, threat actors are very cunning. They're very interested in content. They're very resourceful. So those threat actors are engaged to find processes by which they can leverage to get into organizations. Think of your cloud applications. Think of your SaaS applications. Think of your IoT, your IIoT deliverables, and compromising any of those that aren't part of your traditional fort, right? Because many of the challenges associated with zero trust result from the fact that we are no longer working we're, we're all, many of us are working from home. We're no longer physically in a building that can be physically secured. That network can, can't be physically secured anymore because we are so remote. Well, that opens up a whole bunch of challenges associated with uh, compromise. And the immune system approach, this self-learning AI for cyber defense approach is constantly illuminating information across the organization. We can see device user and network segment behavior and mitigate that risk in real time. We also, by leveraging what currently exists in an organization, identity and access management, um, firewall uh, rule creation, uh, segmentation, by leveraging all of this, we can enhance what's currently leveraged from a zero trust perspective. And because we're constantly self-learning, we provide complete visibility, continuous monitoring and autonomous response on top of the fact that we can autonomously investigate every anomaly that we see, thereby reducing the overall burden to knock and sock staff while increasing the viability of risk mitigation within an organization. Using dark trace alongside uh, of a zero trust helps us in a number of different ways. The dark trace immune system uh, not only complements and enhances zero trust postures with self-learning AI, but we identify, interrupt, and investigate unpredictable cyber threats. Even if they operate over legitimate paths. So this includes in advanced external attacks like ransomware and zero days, supply chains, uh, insider behavior, compromise, careless, malicious insiders, by the way, or naive uh, insiders with privileged access. But we interoperate with zero trust solutions and paradigms via native integrations while validating current zero trust policies and informing future micro segmentation efforts with continuous real-time visibility across the entire organization. Crucially, this continuous monitoring is adaptive in its understanding and pervasive in its scope. This delineates normal and abnormal patterns of life across email, cloud, collaboration platforms, as well as remote endpoints, I already mentioned IoT and OT, as well as the corporate network and critical infrastructure. By deploying Darktrace alongside a robust zero trust architecture and, and model, organizations benefit from a deeply layered security strategy that combines protective posture, default deny, with autonomous smart systems that adapt as the business and workforce evolve. And again, back to the idea of a remote workforce, that's, that's a significant challenge in the world we live in today, right? Because all of us two years ago moved out of our offices and moved into our home offices. Well, that connectivity to SaaS and cloud applications 
opened up a huge avenue for threat actors to take advantage of. And because the threat actors, by leveraging AI and machine learning, those giant avenues by which threat actors could engage no longer have the ability to engage. They have no place to hide. Further, we complement and, and enhance the value of any zero trust architecture, which in this context serves as yet another manifestation of an organi organization's protected skin, albeit one that is better suited for today's more fluid working practices. This analogy means that while the security pol policies uh, implemented as part of a zero trust framework, can help prevent predictable attacks, they are far too static to catch the unknown and unpredictable threats that inevitably get through. But by learning this normal pattern of life from scratch, the immune system approach assumes breach as well. We assume breach because we're constantly monitoring every device user network segment. And because we assume breach, we never assume good. This gives us the ability to detect, investigate, and respond to unforeseeable cyber threats and evade zero days dynamically and in real time. Darktrace learns an evolving sense of self is spoke to each organization, never uh, applied from one organization to another, continually revising and understanding in light of new evidence across cloud SaaS and email as well as endpoints and the corporate network for every organization. This enables the system to spot subtle deviations and novel threats, deliver autonomous response actions to interrupt attacks with surgical precision, and investigate and report on the full scope of security incidents, all dynamically and machine learning and AI driven. This characterization of zero trust as a predominantly pervasive approach brings out another important feature and notable limitation of models that focus on trust rather than the normal pattern of life, namely the binary nature, right? One of the challenges that we don't, that we wanna get away from is this idea of good versus bad because good can turn bad very, very rapidly. As Neil McDonald said, I pointed it out earlier, inevitably trust needs to be extended for work in the digital business and government to get done. Paradoxically, as I mentioned, that zero trust model will need to assume trust at some point. And this immune system approach by contrast is always learning and delineating normal and abnormal patterns of behavior, regardless of whether a user has been granted access or an application has been permitted to run. I'm navigating here, sorry. There we go. So this big shift in self-learning AI, while we can't predict based on historical threat patterns, we have the technology to offer a digital immune system. Think of learning normal, as I've mentioned before, understanding normal, understanding what normal for every device user network segment, every part of your digital estate is all about. We believe that a completely different approach is needed. And one I've been talking about here for a few minutes now. One that deals with the unpredictable, the unknown threats. While we can certainly detect and respond to anything that is known in the world, for example, WannaCry, log force shell, solar winds, what we're particularly good at is identifying the things that no one else can see that insider, that supply chain, that advanced persistent threat, that nation state. Those are the things that Dark Trace is particularly skilled at. And the reason we are is because no one else can do it. Um, unless a threat actor, uh, I'm sorry, unless an investigator just happens to be on a particular device investigating a device when a download occurs or a reconnaissance action occurs, lateral motion begins or, or attempts at C2. Well, we've leveraged the latest advances in machine learning and AI that enable us to create a new technology that learns the, each business from scratch with no prior knowledge and no leverage of any other information in the world. So no threat intelligence, no ruler signature set is required. 
we identify new threats even before they're seen by anyone else. As an example, when log force shell was identified and solar winds was identified and WannaCry was identified, Darktrace had been notifying our customers of anomalous behavior as much as six months before they were ever identified and codified by FireEye. An important distinction there is that the behaviors associated with those pieces of malware ransomware were identified and notified in our customer base upwards of six months prior to them being identified. And here's what's really important about that. When you think about a zero trust architecture, when you think about risk mitigation, which is what ultimately what a zero trust architecture is all about, if you can mitigate risk so early in the, in the MITRE attack phase that it doesn't present an incident, you've significantly changed the security posture of an organization. And that's exactly what we do. The whole premise of dark trace is early detection of anomaly, so early in fact, that you can mitigate risk before the risk becomes an incident. And we believe, we firmly believe, that machine learning and AI are no longer nice to have. They have to be leveraged in the world we live in today. There's absolutely no step around it because the threat actors are doing this. The threat actors are leveraging everything at their disposal to compromise infiltrate organizations. Insider behavior, and I'm not gonna to talk too much about insider behavior because it's a politically charged topic right now, but insider behavior is a significant challenge, right? Um, people believe that they are entitled to corporate content that they are not entitled to. And exfiltration of, of sensitive corporate data is significantly on the rise, as I pointed out earlier. Well, we believe that at the core is the ability to detect any anomaly and mitigate that risk. If we can detect it so early in the kill chain, we can now mitigate that risk downstream by automatically responding to an anomaly, mitigating that anomaly before that anomaly becomes an incident. We've now cut 92% of the problem out of the organization. Typically with Cyber AI Analyst, one of our solutions that automatically investigates every anomaly, we can reduce triage time of approximately 92% in any incident that, it, that is investigated. That's a critically valuable metric for every organization. If I can take 92% of the work off of your SOC team, mitigate that risk, show them only the bits that they need to know, only the bits that are critical to the overall organizational uh, well-being, I can now bring extreme value to the organization. But more importantly about the middle there, the detect and respond, is the idea that machine learning and AI allow us to continually adapt and understand that the artificial intelligence outcomes from a detection are the inputs for a response action. The outcomes from a response action are the inputs for another part of the dark trace platform possibly prevent the ability to harden that environment inside and out we want to harden that security posture for you help you understand where your risk resides how to mitigate that risk and how to harden that environment and then ultimately how to heal and bring that environment back up to a healthy state with zero trust, it's absolutely critical because the advancements of organizations today and the stack that most organizations have employed, it's, in, it's critical for us to be able to integrate and sit alongside that zero trust architecture, whatever that quote unquote zero trust architecture may be for an organization, because it's different among many different organizations and many different departments in the federal government. That while most of the executive orders and most of the documents that are I, Put on the screen earlier, all talk about a, the similar idea of zero trust. Many adoptions of zero trust have, have taken different paths. Well, it's very important for Darktrace to be able to integrate with and sit alongside slash enhance a zero trust architecture and posture. Always doubt, always verify, never trust, always verify. So whether it's integrating with 
IAMs, web gateways, or micro segmentation tools, or even firewalls, Darktrace has the ability with either one click integrations or full RESTful API to integrate with just about anything in the stack today. And I put the parameters around each of those because those really are the protective skin, right? And use that human immune system analogy again, that self-learning immune system in the, at the core inside the body, our, each immune system is unique to every human being, but that protective skin we all have. And that's what the protective skin is for. It's keep the, keep the low-hanging fruit out. And that's good, that's valuable. The problem is, is that low-hanging fruit is only, is fairly static. Um, those script kitties throw the same kind of content at you and you can block that off pretty well. But it's when something else happens, that's when things get really interesting. And that's when typically uh, most models of zero trust begin to crack. And that's where Darktrace really excels. How do we map to the DoD zero trust pillars and tenants? Very, very well, in fact. Um, the whole purpose of Darktrace is to provide visibility. And a core component of uh, visibility is outlined in the tenants at the bottom. Assume the environment's hostile, presume a breach, never trust, always verify, scrutinize explicitly, and apply unified analytics to gain that visibility. Now, each of the pillars there, and I'm sure some of you have taken screenshots, that's fine. Each of those pillars there are, are outlined as uh, to how Darktrace models to those seven pillars. A little bit more detailed view of that is where does machine learning fit in and artificial fit in? Well, that fits in and come kind of more to the right where the maturity in a zero trust endeavor is highest. But my argument is we really fit across the entire platform of pillar and capability for zero trust. If you're gaining visibility throughout every bit of the user, the device, the network, application, data, Visibility and analytics obviously called out specifically, automation and orchest orchestration called out specifically, but I fully believe, and Darktrace's position is that we fully believe that if you gain visibility across the entire spectrum, you've significantly mitigated risk and significantly enhanced the value of a zero trust approach. That zero trust approach of assume breach, never trust, always verify is leveraged at the user device and network level, most effectively by monitoring, by leveraging unsupervised machine learning to model that environment and tell you when something is in fact different than it has been in the past. I shift gears just a little bit here and talk about a couple of different compromises that have direct impact on a position or an understanding of two-factor authentication and or zero trust. Just uh, the 26th, Dan Gooden on, at ARS Technica uh, put out a nice uh, piece on the Twilio compromise, uh, leveraging Authy and, and password manager LastPass. And I just wanted to put this up there because it public information obviously, but it talks very, very interestingly about the challenge of, of two-factor authentication and some of the challenges associated with zero trust. If we take that very static approach that Jeff Cornelius only has this authorization or only this level of access management or this level of integration capability, well, the challenge there is what happens when Jeff's credentials are compromised by some third party as they were in the DoorDash compromise or in the Twilio compromise? What happens when my SaaS application credentials are compromised and the threat actor is able to backpack in to the organization on compromised credentials. Well, maybe I have accelerated privilege or elevated privileges. The challenge there is that now you've got a threat actor who's extremely skilled within the network and can literally lay, live off the land within the, within the network. Everything that we currently have in, in, in our organization, for example, uh, you know, company ABC, well, that threat actor now has the ability to navigate. If they know the, the technologies and the solution sets well enough, 
They basically have the keys to the kingdom. The challenges here are significant, right? Because, and here's an example of uh, a catch in the wild that we engaged. Um, we were running, Dartrace running in a facilities management in, environment. Uh, this happens to be a, a US federal government environment. Um, we saw unusual login locations, uh, changing email rules, file deletions, et cetera. Um, these all resulted in uh, cyber AI analysts taking, uh, making recommendations on action um, and telling exactly what, telling the, the uh, SOC team exactly what needed to be done. The initial infection most likely happened because the employee clicked on a malicious link in a phishing email. But Dark Trace began detecting suspicious logins into the M365 account from unusual locations in the US and Ghana. These, location, these logins um, successfully passed multi-factor authentication security as the attacker had subtly manipulated the user's details, modifying the registered phone number so that the authentication text message went directly to the threat actor. As you know, two-factor two authentication can be compromised using several tactics. It may be hacked via a SIM swapping attack uh, through the use of malicious zero-auth application. Um, an attacker could even resort to a phishing or social engineering attack and work in real time to use the one-time password at the same time as the victim enters it on the phishing page. Uh, but following this, the unusual logins, Darktrace observed that the attacker had changed email rules for the compromised user account, as well as several shared inboxes, including one related to credit control. During the time, the attacker was seen accessing multiple emails in the compromised user's inbox. The attacker may have been sourcing the inbox for sensitive data, I'm not sure, or familiarizing themselves with the user's normal activity and writing style enabling them to craft believable phishing emails and personating the account order. The attacker also deleted multiple emails for the user in an attempt to cover up their tracks. Extremely important breach outline there that would have never been caught by uh, a traditional, uh, traditional zero day approach. Um, here's an, uh, a screen grab of anonymized, of course, here's a screen grab of the actual finding and alerting that went on. Uh, extremely high confidence thresholds of 99%, unusual SAS administrative logins here, um, and specific breach data, telling you exactly where the co uh, compromise was, what the content was, and where that content came from. And then further antigen responses, I'm not clicking. There we go. Antigen responses, um, exactly what cyber AI analysts found. Uh, obviously anonymized again. Uh, the user, a simple summary of exactly what Darktrace sees. Oops, sorry about that. Of exactly what Darktrace sees, how we see it, and what we recommend you do against or to mitigate this risk. The next one, a half name attack. So in this one, uh, we detected multiple attempts uh, to compromise an exchange server that was uh, internet facing. Uh, we leveraged, it was uh, through the proxy logon vulnerability. A financial services organization, lots of anomalous activity. You can see all the models that breached on the right-hand side there. And this is one where we talked a little bit about Antigena and our capabilities to take autonomous action. Well, the autonomous action component of Antigena is very, very purposeful and very surgical. The idea, and we don't ever turn this on in autonomous mode out the box, we rather uh, our customers learn to understand, appreciate, and value autonomous capabilities. So we leave it in human confirmation mode, which is Antigena makes recommendations about the, the action that should be taken. And the human can the human in the loop can take action and say yes we agree or no that should not be taken. In this case, uh, this customer was leveraging Antigena for certain models and for certain users in fully autonomous mode. And in this case, uh, Antigena took action of bo blocking specific connections over 443 and 88. And that's an important component that Antigena is extremely tunable. 
we can get very, very granular with, with how Antigena takes action in environments. One caveat in a zero trust model, we don't recommend that Antigena be put in an autonomous mode in operational environments, IoT environments, because those devices are very, very critical to overall operations of an organization. Taking a, or blocking a communication over 443 for two hours is not gonna bring the organization to its knees. Taking a PLC offline for two hours could potentially bring an organization to its knees. So that's why I rec make that recommendation. So here's a, a screen grab of, of the incident and the response. Uh, cyber AI analyst uh, analyzed and provided a summary of the possible SSL command and control and the Antigena blocking action uh, outlined here at the bottom, uh, which was in fact uh, block port 8080 and 443 for two hours. Uh, one more uh, from the use case. This is one that is a, is a really good one because I mentioned it earlier, our ability to detect log4j before log4j was even known, um, outlined in an organization, uh, multiple organizations, I should say, uh, sharing exactly what Darktrace found in those organizations prior to log4 shell being identified. Connections uh, to rare external IPs, um, unusual ports. We blocked those connections uh, to the unusual IPs mitigating risk to organizations. Very, very powerful deliverable because obviously anytime you have uh, a nation state, advanced persistent threat or a zero day, um, Darktrace has the ability to, in real time, notify, detect, um, notify you of the anomaly and allow you to either take action on your own or leverage antigena responses to mitigate those, those, uh, those challenges. So revisiting this slide one more time before I get into a quick demo, um, I wanna just emphasize that every pillar has as its primary functional goal, some human intensive process whether that's tagging, classifying, configuring, or defining some rule or signature set. Leveraging machine learning and artificial intelligence, we remove that mundane, redundant human task of specifying what is good versus bad and let the data speak for itself, regardless of where that data is. That's an important component, regardless of where the data is. A fundamental tenet of zero trust is assuming breach. If you hold this to be true, then the only way to detect is to model for anomaly such that every detection is the goal so mitigation efforts are valuable versus costly. The whole idea, early detection so that you can mitigate risk and mitigate that risk to value versus cost, right? Think about that. If you don't mitigate the risk early, then ultimately it ends up costing the organization significantly more than identifying that anomaly, detecting it, and taking action to mitigate it. So I think that's that. Let me step to, I think I have the ability to share a new screen. I do. Give me one second here. Just have to find it. All righty. I'm not able to find it. Give me one sec, folks. Sorry about this. There we go. All right, Chris, I haven't been paying attention. Are there questions that have come up? Um, not yet. Okay, great. Great, perfect. All right, so now I'm going to share this screen. Thank you, folks, for your patience. There we go. All right, Chris. Yeah, you can see the um, world he, world map. Yeah, the world map. Yeah. Great. Okay, so folks, we're just kind of walking through Darktrace very very quickly. The UI, basically, this is the visualization that a SOC operator, uh, an analyst, uh, might might leverage to mitigate uh, risk or, or anomaly within the organization. This happens to be a critical infrastructure uh, organization that we anonymize the data for. I'll orient to the UI very quickly. Um, 
simple search capability, just anything you want, drop in that box and Darktrace will find it in, inside the, uh, the data that we've analyzed. We typically sit span or tap off of core network switching. Um, in operational environments, we can see every, every segment within the OT environment. In IT environments, cloud and SaaS environments, we can virtualize anything that we, we need to virtualize um, to draw in the raw network traffic that we use uh, to leverage and model. In operation in uh, government environments, we're certainly capable of a completely uh, decentralized and also disconnected uh, appliances and or virtual uh, appliances. So absolutely no no need, no requirement for connectivity to the web. Uh, we don't process any of our content in cloud-based environments. We do everything either uh, on-prem or in uh, VPCs uh, for the client. So absolutely no requirement to move your data off into Darktrace's cloud for, for management. Essentially what we do is ingest that raw network traffic to look for the pattern of life, compute mathematically the pattern of life, the digital thumbprint for every device user network segment. Here in this case, we're looking at only 126 devices in this particular demo environment, 15 subnets we see, but that creates us about 3000 patterns of life. Now there's no direct correlation between what a pattern of life is and a device user or network segment, but it's Darktrace's understanding of interconnectivity and communication. And I'll dig into that in just a moment. Uh, in the top right, a full playback feature of every anomaly that we detect. So in the bottom, all of our anomalies, everything that we've seen over the past, in this case, seven days uh, for this particular environment of 126 devices. I can show you the devices here. Darktrace picks up a full device admin capable of seeing everything that we see in the, in the environment. And pulling everything from that raw network traffic that we can possibly catalog for you. Of course, you can export this and import content uh, from any number of rep repositories. Further, we full have the ability to pull in telemetry data from just about anything in your, in your network. So again, back to the whole zero trust discussion about understanding what is the totality of an, of an environment and mitigating that risk, understanding where that risk resides, and then mitigating that risk with potential autonomous response. Here, we've, uh, we've like outlined a number of model breaches, and I say that very carefully, model breaches, not necessarily breaches of the environment, but breaches of the mathematical models that represent normal for the environment. I have the ability to slice and dice the data any way, shape, or form I choose. In this case, I'm just gonna sort it by device. So this device, this particular expedev131.skata.local, has a number of model breaches. In fact, it has 10 model breaches over approximately a 24 hour period, 1456 on Wednesday the 1st or 31st to about 1442 on the 1st. Now these 10 model breaches represent escalating concern, yellows to oranges to reds, and then a de-escalation. That escalating concern is over external connections, and SSL certificate in, in, uh, lack of validation on those. Just minimize this for you, just so I can give you a playback and show you exactly how Darktrace sees the content. What's really important about our ability to model the content is everything that we see happens in near real time. And because we consume that content in near real time, I have the ability to pick out things that are very interesting, a non-signature, non ruled version of WannaCry five different model breaches resulting in 100% unusual activity for this particular device. SMB write, read, move, SMB all, internal data transfer, all from this device. Very, very unusual behavioral patterns for that device. That's an important distinction because I haven't had a human take a look at that device. I haven't told a human that this device is subject to some zero trust policy. Rather, Darktrace is automatically understanding that this device never reaches out. It never engages SMB writes, reads, moves, or all. It never engages in internal data transfer to other devices. Hence, the model breach, 100% unusual activity. Now, if Antigena were on in this environment, Antigena's action, there would be a green hover around this, Antigena's action would be to block outbound connections, block external connections from that device for a period of two hours until an analyst can take a look and, and triage the anomaly. 
What's more important, I believe, uh, personally, I believe, um, than what a particular device is doing is what cyber AI analyst does. Cyber AI analyst takes those 38 or so anomalies that Dark Trace has seen in this environment over the past seven days and boils that ocean down into three actionable insights. And those actionable insights are very, very specific. In this case, it's taken that one that I just showed you, that one device and said, there are three significant model breaches that you should really need to pay attention to. The encryption of files over SMB, Tor activity, and the possible SSL command and control with multiple endpoints. That, that's a very, very important building, if you will, of what's happening in the background, machine learning and AI are dynamically and in real time doing the analysis for you so that you can now mitigate that risk as efficiently as possible. We provide you a simple summary of exactly what Darktrace has seen. We also map it to the attack phases from the MITRE attack framework giving you exactly where this sits within the attack phase. Now you've got demonstrable action capabilities from rich information that you can take deliverable action on very, very quickly. Very simply, a um, couple of different uh, examples here. This is uh, another device, uh, 127 uh, versus 131. We saw additional, this which, HTTP command and control, and then suspicious chain of, of administrative and OT connections, where we map out for you exactly the attack path that that engaged. This one happens to be more involved in the attack phases, but gives you real-time visibility in where, where we sit in the attack phase. And with that, um, I'm going to close by with two things. Uh, first, Dark Trace's blog site. Uh, we're the only company that I know of that posts uh, real-time catches in the wild on our blog site. So please navigate to darktrace.com slash blog and have full visibility into all of our catches that we engage in the wild. Many, I should say, many of our catches that we engage in the wild. Many of those are zero days. Many of those are malicious insiders or na naive insider examples. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that for you uh, to consider as you move forward. Um, and then I will uh, stop sharing the screen. There we go. Let me share back here, I think. Yep. All righty there. You should be able to see the screen now. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yep. 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 Okay, good. So um, just finishing up here uh, really quickly. Uh, there we go. Is our go to market super simple? Uh, we deliver a proof of value. We don't believe in a proof of concept. Our 7,500 plus customers are the proof of the concept. The proof of value is uh, literally a 30 day trial, uh, 30, 45 days, whatever the case is. Uh, we set up uh, Dark Trace for you in your environment. Uh, we show you how to operate Dark Trace and we let you, with guidance, we let you uh, run with Dark Trace for 30, 45 days. The whole purpose is so that you feel comfortable with the AI and machine learning. Everything is done 100% passively. The ingestion of raw network traffic is done via, as I mentioned, tap or span off of core network switching, such that Darktrace can model that content. Typically, a physical appliance is deployed uh, within your environment uh, to model that content passively off of your core network switch. Um, we show you, just as I've done through the demo just now, we show you exactly how to use Darktrace, and then we uh, walk with you uh, through that use case, uh, through your use cases over the course of 30 or 45 days. Um, the value of that for you, obviously, is it gives you immense visibility uh, across your entire digital estate. Um, the purpose of ingesting all that content is so that you can see the things that you didn't know uh, existed in your environment. Typically, it's about 35% more devices are exposed in our customer environments than are known by our customers. Um, we show you the supply chain compromise avenues that you have. We show you uh, the opportunity for insider behavior, malicious or naive. Uh, we show you devices that are misconfigured, um, potentially reaching out to the, to the web that you didn't know. The whole purpose is again, to augment your team and increase, increase the efficiency and accuracy of your cyber risk mitigation efforts specifically around your zero trust endeavors. 
our setup is typically less than an hour. Um, we can deploy, as, a, as I mentioned earlier, either on-prem um, or cloud. Uh, we do not require uh, export of content for analysis. Everything is done on-prem um, or in your VPC. So uh, we are heavily focused on partners in our environment. So if you have a partner that you prefer working with, point them my way and we'll have a conversation and figure out the best way to go to go to town. And I'll leave you with a few things here. Um, I see there's a couple of, uh, there's a, at least one question in chat. Um, but I'll leave you with this. And if there are any questions, please don't hesitate reaching out. Good question. Uh, Mr. Ryan asked, are we FedRAMP? We are not FedRAMP yet. Um, however, uh, we expect our FedRAMP uh, authorization to come through in, by mid-23. We have five ATOs we're currently working on, although we only need one, obviously. Um, but we have five uh, justice, uh, several in DOD, and uh, two others in FedCiv that are, we're currently working uh, through our, our, our ATO uh, process. Thanks for the question, Mr. Ryan. If there are no other questions, um, Chris, I will take pause now. And uh, where are we on time? Huh. Just got about 15 minutes left. If there are any questions, I'm happy to take those. It looks like I'm going to give you guys 15 minutes of your day back. 